Welcome to Art Tip 18. And what we're going to be doing today is making really cool plots like this 3D plot here using this package called Ray Shader. Now this is an elevation plot, but we can use it to make all sorts of cool plots from ggplots and also terrain maps. So uh, let's check it out. So um, the first thing that we're going to do, uh, we're going through tip 18 today, 3D ggplots with Ray Shader uh, for weekly art tips. So to get this code, what you need to do is you need to sign up here for the uh, art tips newsletter and that's going to get you access to this code. So what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll once you get a, gain access, you'll get access to this GitHub repo. I'm going to pull down the repo. And when I do that, I'm going to have this 018 Ray Shader ggplot 3D. So that's the folder we're going to be working out of and you'll have access to this .r file. So click that, it'll open up this file. Cool, next, what we're gonna be doing is working with two libraries, Ray Shader and the Tidyverse. So the Tidyverse is going to load in a bunch of other packages, uh, such as ggplot2 and dplyr, which are the main data wrangling and visualization libraries. So we're gonna be doing three plots in, in here today. First one is going to be a 3D data plot. And this is just to get our feet wet with how this works. So we're going to use the MT cars data set, which is a very popular data set um, that comes with R. Um, what we're going to be doing is plotting the displacement as a function of, or the uh, M MPG, the displacement as a function of MPG. So MPG on our X axis, displacement on our Y axis. And, um, the color will be uh, the cylinder. So we're gonna uh, group it by cylinder basically. So um, when we do this, I'm just gonna run these first three lines here and we get something that looks like this where we've got MPG down here, we've got displacement up here. Um, and we could do this differently. Normally it's actually uh, displacement as a function of MPG. So try this one, this will work a little bit better. And there we go. So MPG is our uh, dependent variable and that depends on displacement. Okay, we're coloring by cylinder. So you can see that this is kind of like an elevation. So as a cylinder gets higher, uh, meaning that uh, more the car has more cylinders, uh, we can see that the colors start, start to get bluer, light blue, it goes from dark blue all the way up to light blue. So this is kind of like, this is actually a 3D plot. Um, although we're mapping it on 2D. So we can use this color feature as the way that we convert into a 3D plot. So I'm just gonna run the rest of these. Um, if you uh, are interested in learning how all of these work, um, this I teach uh, ggplot 2D visualization, such an important library. I teach in my DS4B 101-R course in week four. So this is what the final plot looks like. And what I want to do is I'm going to save this as G1. So if I go over into my environments pane, I have G1 here. And this is the ggplot object. So if I send that to this console, I get the ggplot. Um, Ray Shader is this really cool package that allows us to convert these ggplot objects to 3D, three-dimensional plots. So I'm going to run this and I'll explain what's going on. So what we're, what's happening is I'm using this plot underscore GG function, which takes any GG plot and it allows us to convert it into a three dimensional plot, uh, which is really cool because this is a great way for us to uh, make our, our visualizations really interesting and highlight key points. Okay, and that opened up in this window here, a three dimensional plot. And we can see here now what's going on. We can see that um, over here our displacement is growing in elevation and we can see that the elevation is being driven by this cylinders. So this is really cool. It's a great way to uh, show off some plots using depth and uh, and it's really neat. Um, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this uh, Ray Shader package. Okay, um, the next thing that we can do, we can also render the camera. So um, we can take that plot and we can use a zoom theta and phi to get a specific angle. And what that does is renders a camera snapshot. And then when I do render snapshot zoom, um, it will hone in on that specific part of the plot that I wanted to, to uh, show. So what I had to do was I had to change uh, render snapshot clear equal to false. So when I do that, then um, it does not uh, clear out my, uh, my, my current RGL device. 
So that way it allows me to change the different zoom angles. So if I want to do uh, zoom in to say 0 0.75, control enter, and it should uh, then render the snapshot a little bit more zoomed in and you can kind of uh, adjust these. So notice that my uh, RGL device is now zoomed in at 0 0.75, which is a little bit higher zoom. Okay, cool. So that's that's the basics of this package. Um, it's really neat. Uh, now what I'm going to do is kind of uh, go down through an elevation matrix, which is another use case, really cool use case, which is once we start to get into um, actually plotting data uh, from an elevation standpoint. You can think of these like maps um, are the most common example. So one way that you get data in is uh, in, in the form of a matrix where you have kind of like a heat map, so to speak, where you have um, or a raster file that's that's uh, very common um, so this volcano is a matrix and what we can do is we can do some data wrangling to be able to visualize this and plot this so data wrangling is a really important skill uh, i teach it in my one-on-one -on -one course in weeks two and three it's super essential so first thing we're going to do we're going to um, run this code here and it's going to do a little bit of data wrangling for us so what it's going to do is, is uh, take that matrix and convert it into an X and Y and with a value. So uh, the value at one location point one, one is 100, one, two is 100, one, three is 101 and so on. So uh, it creates a tibble of 53,000 uh, by three columns. So you can see it's a very long tibble. We're going to save this as volcano tibble. And now it's in the format for ggplot because then I can start to build out this ggplot using the geom tile function. So this is uh, basically creating a heat map for me of uh, some volcanoes. And uh, what we can do is we can add contours and so on, and we can begin to visualize it that way. So as soon as you start to have a heat map in here, um, which has some depth to it, this is a, uh, an example where we can then convert that into a ray shader object, again, using plot GG. So uh, we can do G2, uh, plot GG and it will make a uh, three-dimensional plot for us. Okay, and it just made this plot here. So this is really cool. It's an elevation map using the GG plot uh, that we previously created, um, basically converting it into a 3D ray shaded uh, GG plot. Uh, so very neat. And I want to show you one more thing. So this uh, this heat map when you're working with uh, map data and uh, textures, this volcano. Um, heat map style of uh, array or a matrix is very common. So um, there's another function called plot 3D. So if you convert this into a shade, shaded object, which uh, gives you a shade value for each of these points using this sphere shade function, and pipe it into plot 3D. And then you also provide it the, um, the original data, which is what it's going to overlay the shading on. Um, you can make these really cool maps as well. So here's what it made. We can check this out. It made a 3D heat map uh, and you can see it's an actual texture. Um, so very cool. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday free R tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here, put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.